Reed joins us. He's the Chief Solutions Officer at Pivotal Data, uh, talking about the cloud, the transformation, call centers in particular. Carl, it's really good to see you. How are you doing, firstly? And I hope that uh, you're having a productive uh, lockdown period, albeit that we're doing this over video, as most of the world is. Yeah, um, incredibly productive. Um, it's been really good. Um, businesses are starting to pick up. Obviously, yep. with the lockdown levels dropping, so positive. Well, what exactly does Pivotal do? Um, we're a specialist in uh, contact centers, customer experience, enterprise communication solutions. We assist various organizations um, in all sizes with consulting, implementing, maintaining, uh, managing their solutions across these areas, um, either whether it's on-premise, in other words, they've actually bought the technologies and it's mm. on-premise, or by us hosting it for you or your organization in the cloud, AWS and the likes. Yeah, well, listen, I mean, you're in a very interesting space. I mean, you hear about all the banks and how they've had to just, you know, when the lockdown started, everybody had to move their call centers remotely. I mean, that's like on your, um, definitely the stuff that you do, as you just mentioned, and customer experience, really, really key. How has the cloud impacted call centers um, and, and, you know, modernizing the industry? And I would imagine COVID has had a, a great deal to play in fast tracking a lot of things, right? Sure. Sure. Um Wow, where do I start? Um, well, you know, the, the whole sort of uptake in cloud initially, in some respects, was pretty slow. And I'm sort of going back, you know, a couple of years ago, because cloud's really been around a long time. Um, it's not been around, it's not something that sort of was born, you know, two or three years ago. Um, mm. But the, the sort of the, the adoption of cloud um, has obviously been slow. And the main reason for this adoption has been due to education. Um, a lot of people think it's technology. A lot of people think it's, uh, you know, you know, access and the likes. Yes, there's little pieces that play to that sort of puzzle. Yeah. But the understanding of what cloud offers, security, the benefits um, to an organization, you know, what is the value? You know, what is the actual business value? You know, what is the ROI to it? And I'm not talking ROI as in rands and cents. I'm talking about the business value, you know, the real tangible business value. Mm. And then today, um, if you look at across it, uh, cloud has taken the industry to new heights. Um, you know, if you look at what we've achieved um, in cloud um, with technology and the likes, uh, we could never have done that in the traditional ways. Uh, traditional was very, very held, uh, sort of, it was held back in many respects uh, to sort of progress with new ways of technology, uh, you know, bringing on new channels and the likes. And, you know, cloud brings us the ability to bring on new features, updates, technologies that are delivered at record-breaking speeds. Um, and, you know, when I say record-breaking speeds, you know, traditionally in the past, if you wanted to add a new feature to your contact center or, or your environment, um, it could take months, mm, mm. years to, to bring something on. I mean, we all hear about this. Um, it's been out there forever. Whereas in cloud, you can make a decision today and literally in a couple of days time you've got it it's talk about agility eh, carl i mean that agility Absolutely. is extraordinary i mean the call center industry itself you were just touching on it now i mean this must have revolutionized the industry i mean it's been there for a while but the ability now for people to work anywhere you don't have to be in one specific location right yeah absolutely so, so the ability for people to be able to work anywhere has completely changed the industry um uh, cloud basically gives us the flex that flexibility. I mean, look at you and I. Uh, right now, we're on cloud. This yeah. is cloud. Uh, yeah. You know, people think, you know, cloud's new. No, it's not. You've been using Zoom and you've been using Teams and you've been doing all these sort of things online for years. Your cell phone actually utilizes the cloud more than you ever think it does. Everything that you do is cloud-based. Um, so many of the contact centers were not prepared um into this whole change and what i mean by this is um uh, when the sort of the whole thing happened um with us you know specifically in, in this year in the way that the, the whole industry changed we weren't prepared um 60 to 70 percent of the industry was just not prepared and you can see that uh, unfortunately a lot of organizations have uh, liquidated have gone bust uh, i was actually personally involved with with some of that happening um across industries and, and areas that i was connected to so we were not pre prepared. Um, organizations scrambled. Um, 
and in the, in the pivotal data world, in our world, uh, we delivered more projects, more implementations in just March, April, and May than we what, what we would normally have done in 12 months. Wow, so that's extraordinary. It's just been absolutely incredible. Um, it has meant that, uh, <laughs> that we've actually had to work some serious amount of hours. Um, you know, the guys have been pushing 18, 19, 20 hours a day. Um, it's not sustainable, obviously, and, and yeah. we've been adapting to this new normal. Um, but it's, it's basically taken the industry and it's just rapidly uh, turned the industry around. So, so I mean, has enabled, sorry? Yeah. So, I mean, Carl, I mean, it's interesting you say that, but I mean, how, how would you actually define a, a modern call center? Um, we, we've mentioned working remotely, etc., but all these people that scrambled that left it a little bit too late but what is the ideal modern call center how would you define it well traditionally a contact center would offer you a certain a way to engage with them um you know phone us or maybe email uh, hmm. but even email was not even seen in the same light as a traditional call how many times have you sent an email to a contact center and for days you didn't even get an answer yes you might have just got this automated response and nothing happened Mm. Um, that's the traditional. The modern contact center is offering your customers the ability to interact with you in any part of your organization, in any form that they want, by any communication means. Think about it, by any communication means. So if your customer, I'll give you an example. So if your customer wants to email you now, SMS you tomorrow, and in between call you, and maybe at the same time, WhatsApp you the information images that you are looking for. And then a little bit later, write a review on your Facebook page that you are monitoring and you can respond to with having all this in real time with all the supported data metrics and the likes to make near real time improvement changes to meet the real time needs. That's a modern context. I mean, that's uh, exciting. But then, you know, you, it, there's different layers to it, right? At the end of the day, yes. it's all about customer experience. And, uh, you know, you talk about uh, multi-channel support. You talk about a help desk. Just explain how multi-channel support works. So, you know, just being a, um, a help desk agent um, in sort of a, a in the sort of traditional way, those days are fast approaching, approaching extinction. Um, th those are gone. The multi-channel, um, or uh, what we like to call it, is the omni-channel uh, mm -hmm. contact center type environment is one that is able to provide voice, email, two-way repliable SMSs. So it's not just a one-way SMS, it's a two-way repliable SMS that you're replying to a contact center. It's WhatsApping, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn even. Uh, wow. you know, some people say to me, yeah, LinkedIn, am I gonna sort of communicate? Yeah, um, even things like Instagram um, and the likes to the contact centers um, and receive the same level of response and attention uh, back on any of those channels. And in short, handle any type of communication, um, whether it's a customer, partner, supplier, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's quite interesting that uh, you, 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 I didn't think about LinkedIn, for example, and it makes complete sense that, you know, people communicate on different platforms and they expect that customer experience, uh, the, the company that you're interacting with to be able to deal with it. I mean, this is the modern world we're living in. So how, how does a company go on that journey, um, you know, to, to design their call center and they want all of these things? I guess it's not a one size fit all and you've got to customize it, um, you know, is a bespoke solution the way to go? So there are a few sort of areas to um, a contact center and a lot of people sort of get confused. Um, contact centers is not just one solution. You have the contact center solution, which is your interaction management that handles all your channels. Uh, everything comes into that. So your WhatsApps, your emails, your SMSs, everything sort of flutters in and it comes in from different areas. Mm -hmm. That contact center technology is in incredibly complex. Um, that's what we do at, uh, at Pivotal. Um, that's what we provide to our customers and we provide that sort of interaction management and that's what the contact center platform does. But part of that contact center environment is a make of other systems. You've got things like ERP, so you've got your financial systems, you've got your CRMs and you've got any other backends, maybe stock management systems, but all of these systems play a critical part to the puzzle. You can't have one without the other. 
Um, it's great that you can answer a customer's call, but if you can't look up their record, well, that's a bit pointless. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, you are going to get more irritated that you took the call was taken. Now you get through to the agent, and the agent's going to say to you, "Well, I can't help you." Um, that's not service. So, building this sort of environment, one size fits all when it comes to contact center technology. Yes, there is. That's cloud. That's what cloud offers. One size fits all when it comes to financial systems. Absolutely, yes. The same as CRMs, the same with the backend systems and stock management and the likes. Bringing this all together um, is incredibly easy when you're talking about cloud type deployments. Mm -hmm. If you go back to traditional systems to integrate those systems and get them all to talk, you talk about the bespoke type solution. Um, that's what the bespoke is, is all these different pieces that you've got to sort of now put, put together. That in the traditional terms um, used to take months. Years. You would hear Standard Bank and, and FMB saying that they've launched a project, uh, it could be like an omni channel project. What you don't know, it's not contact center, it's the integration of all these systems that they're putting together. Mm. That stuff takes years to put together. But cloud changes that. It changes that ability. We adopt things like a waterfall approach. As soon as functionality appears, we can enable it immediately, we can put it into the industry. The integration is seamless. Uh, so to get these systems to talk to each other is pretty easy. We've done some very recent, and, and I'm talking about in the last sort of week or two, some seriously complex integration into different backend systems. We did it literally in a couple of weeks. Not I mean, months, not years. It's amazing, uh, Carl, when you look at the complexities, and I'm just thinking now the ERP system and this and that all plugging in. And you talk about the pieces of the puzzle for an organization that was used to doing things in a certain way. Now you've got all of this integration and a new way of thinking. Um, is it, do companies struggle to adopt to a modern system like this? <laughs> um, well, it's actually on that, I get asked a similar question over and over again, you know, um, how are we going to make this work in our organization? You know, yeah. what do we have to worry about? Um, what are the pitfalls and the likes? And that's one of the things um, that, again, you know, that we do is we provide a lot of consultancy to, to an organization of what to look out for, what to do. It's not just about buying the technology. It's, you know, for us, it's, it's about sort of making sure that you're a customer of ours for 20, 30 years. So we mm -hmm. want to make sure that we provide you the right thing. But getting back to that question, and it's, it's very important. A lot of people think that the, the, the success of a project, uh, besides the technology, that the success of the project is going to be the board ticking the box, the exco saying yes, and we're good to go. Mm. No, it's not. Um, yes, I love the board. Yes, uh, I, I'm an exco member and I understand that, but, but that's not the people you should be worrying about. You should be talking to the people that interact with your customers, the agents, the users, the people that physically use those systems every single day. Put an Exco member on the chair of an agent and get them to handle 100 calls that they feel every day. Get them to feel what that agent feels. Get them to live that experience. And by living that experience, you very quickly find that the people that you need buy-in from, the people that you need to have part of that buying process to adopt new technologies into your business are the people that use the system. And it uh -huh. seems sort of like, yeah, but that's like common sense, but it doesn't happen. And that's the problem. We need to get people bought in and buy-in needs to bring in accountability and accountability is you making people from the bottom to the top, top to the bottom, left and right, all accountable and all part of that process. And no, makes, really make them part of that process. Makes complete sense. You know, you can't just focus on one sector. You know, it, it, everybody has to be focused on the customer at the end of the day and getting that right. I mean, you, we've touched on such fascinating insights and of course, all driven by the cloud and we are seeing you know, many data centers coming online in South Africa. Where do you see this industry, the call center? the industry in the next few years well yeah i mean i think i think we're also sick and tired of just hearing about covid and the pandemic and and everything else you know i'm 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 an optimist i like to see the sort of good in the bad uh, you know that's what i do I, i'm in solutions you know, i look for 
solutions to problems. Um, and I think, you know, the world has changed. Um, the pandemic has changed so many things and so many aspects. Who knows what the next wave is going to be? Who knows what the next thing is going to do that's going to either be good or bad? Because it doesn't matter what the change is or what's actually happening in our industry in, in South Africa or the likes, a good change or a bad change is still a change. It doesn't matter how you look at it. It's still disruptive in any way. A good move in some direction is still a, disrupt, a disruptive uh, functional feature to what you're doing in your business. Mm. So we as South Africans, one thing we need to do is be prepared, good or the bad. Be prepared for the change. We talk about it, but we don't really act on it. We don't, we sort of almost go, well, yeah, tomorrow's another day. Yeah, we'll get to it tomorrow. No, we've learned that this year, especially in March this year, that our world got turned upside down and we need to prepare ourselves. And, but it's positive. It's not a negative. Um, we're seeing a massive transition to cloud. Um, the amount of organizations that have moved to cloud, are moving to cloud, have put it into their strategy, since March till now has been unprecedented. I haven't seen that amount of movement in five years. Um, so I'm personally engaging with customers every week. Um, I was in a session earlier this morning with exactly that. Customers are asking, how do we move forward? What do we need to worry about? So we help them through that journey. So where we see things happening, uh, especially in South Africa, is there'll be a large adoption of cloud uh, the transition to cloud will be something that will be on everybody's radar um, and it'll be top of mind, uh, part of their strategy, part of the organization. But adoption to cloud, and I want to leave it with this, adoption to cloud doesn't have to be 100% at the same time. It doesn't have to be one phase, one, one project. It can be taking certain components of a um, cloud strategy and implementing it over stages. So you could say, okay, for the next month, we're going to move these components. Then in two months time, these components. And eventually in, in a year's time, you've done everything. This big bang approach to move to cloud, for me personally, and I know I'm going to get probably shut down for this, is a no-no. Um, I wouldn't do it. it. I would do it in a very controlled, uh, prescriptive way with buy-in from all your users, making sure uh, that you've ticked all the boxes and have the right partners in place. You know, have the right people that are in the journey with you. You know, a partner is not a partner if they just drop a box and run away. Uh, in South Africa, we traditionally have that and, and it's been bad for the industries. You know, you get this guy, you buy something from them and then when you try and phone them for some service, they disappeared. Um, we need to be, as South Africans, partnering with organizations and people that know how to do this. They have the history, they have the knowledge, they have the experience to take you on this, this sort, of, um, uh, sort of path that you want to go. And it doesn't matter whether it's contact centers, ERPs, financial systems, uh, stock take. I mean, you look at what take a lot has done to the industry over uh, the pandemic. Uh, take a lot has just boomed in what they've done because they were very strategic and very clever in the way that they transitioned their things to cloud. I mean, they e-commerce mm -hmm. end to end, very clever. And the customer experience, the key in all of this, without any doubt. Um, Carl Reed, the Chief Solutions Officer at Pivotal Data, thank you so much for those insights. Absolutely fascinating talking to you. We wish you well. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day.